Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender's an app. And this week, we do have a couple of cool stuff that you would want to take a look at. And of course, there's some very cool updates coming from the Blender developers in terms of Pose Library. We'll talk about that, talk about some free cool add-ons that you can get, and at the same time, some pretty good read that would improve how you get to work with Blender sometime in the future, and also some updates that is available for this week. Getting started, if you go over to blender.org and go over to downloads, go all the way down to the experimental, you would notice that the experimental page has now been updated. You also notice that there's a tiny color coding that deals with alpha, beta, and also the candidates. And of course, you notice that the dark theme is quite pleasing to the eye, and this is quite beautiful. And right here, you would also see the Blender 2.8 3.16 candidate is you know gearing up and while we speak about those using the 2.83 lts and the candidate gearing up for release blender 2.93 is also gearing up for release so if you simply go over to the release notes you would notice that the schedule date for the release is may 26 and beacon 4 actually started out sometime in 19th of may 2021 and the release will be sometime by next week so for those who like to take a look at some of the cool features some of the things that will be coming with this and you know hopefully things that will be making it over to 3.0 which will probably not be seen in 2.93 the lts which will be starting out we would go through and talk about these things and also shed some light on some of these tools and how you can get started with using them and while we talk about the things that you can get started with using there's also a couple of updates that is currently happening right now so there is a documentation project update that is going on sometime two three weeks ago we talked about the idea that certain things are supposed to be put in place in terms of documentation and also code documenting and it is very cool to see that that has actually begun so if you have any ideas or you know you have anything related to how they can improve the current documentation process that is not listed within this blog you can actually come through go down here and reply and the folks at Blender Foundation will take a look at that and see how they can even make it look better. And while we look at things that they are looking at making better, the mesh editing optimization is something that they are currently talking about and there's a blog post about that. So the mesh editing optimization initial post just got started and the major part of this conversation actually started out within the blenderartist.org page where there's a talk about 2.8 plus being slower compared to 2.79 and that is something that they are trying to address right here. So the folks at Blender Foundation are looking at bottlenecks that deals with uploading data to the GPU as well as redundant data duplication and GPU data rebuilding that can be skipped entirely and the main focus for this particular sprint will be on high priority areas while other projects will be prioritized in the future so you might want to also take a look at uh, some of the things here all right so you might want to take a look at some of the areas and see uh, the details for this and i'm also going to put this particular blog in the description where you can check out the proposal for mesh optimization which is going to be more like a project there's also an edit mesh performance overview and the gpu mesh drawing performance so you might want to come through read these things up there is a very tiny clause that deals with how these will perform so while gains in mesh editing should be achievable it is also possible that users with complex data won't notice much differences so for example if the project which you're working on is heavily reliant on modifiers you may not be able to see an overall improvement of speed and also performance since that is not the initial target at the moment so if you want to read more about mesh optimization then you can come through and check this out and with this said let's talk about the cream on top Pose Library version 2. Pose Library version 2 is something that will be coming over to Blender and this is being confirmed that Blender 3.0 will be shipping with a brand new Pose Library system and it is going to be the very first practical extension of the asset browser and this will be introduced right here in 3.0. Now this comes with a whole lot of things that I believe a lot of us will be excited about and with that said, we're going to go down and take a look at how this one works. So by default, if you go in and download 3.0 right now, the alpha, you'll be able to actually play with this. And one thing to note is if you have Blender 3.0, the alpha open right here, let's just go in and dock that perfectly like so. All right, so if you have it right here, if you go over to edit, go over to your preference, 
you would notice that within your preference if you go over to the file part right now you can now include this within your file part so there's a conversation about what are assets and how do you actually deal with this if you already have a couple of assets you can save them in a part and you can click on the plus sign to add the part by default this is going to be saved within your documents folder if you're working on windows and there is going to be a new folder called blender and inside there there's a subfolder known as asset so if you already have yours you can go in and you know put in the directory put in the name which you want and that is how you can get good with it now i've already talked about how the asset manager actually works and a couple of things you need to know about it for you to create an asset right now if you click right here within your 3d editor type you can go over to asset browser and within your asset browser you can select on any object right click and go all the way down to where you have your id data and you can make them as assets and once you do that you can see it right here now over there in the blog there's a couple of conversations that deals with what is an asset and uh, how do you get to manipulate things in terms of animation and how does this actually work with the pose library so an asset by default as defined here is a simple data block which simply means that this data block can either be object meshes materials actions or an entire scene so you can simply select an entire scene and mark it as an asset and you can use this for several cases now in cases of a pose library every pose asset is going to be its own action and this actually makes it very possible to give each pose their very own thumbnail now you can thumbnail a given pose and you can tag it and this can be tied to an appropriate character and also you can choose to copy your pose from one point to another now in comparison with the very old one there is a couple of things that you might probably not be able to work with and there is also some very interesting updates coming to the version 2 so we talked about this one a couple of weeks ago where we saw that the asset browser will be having a ui within the 3d viewport and this is also something that will be coming so if you like to apply a pose to a character which you've saved before you can actually do this within your 3d viewport so all you need to do is when you go in and press n on your keyboard you will notice that you have the animation section which simply pops up which deals with the pose library and you can click on any of the poses that you've saved before and you can apply it you can choose to flip this you can also choose to do a simple blend by clicking and dragging slightly and these can blend and this is not the only thing that you can do you can even choose to save actions create your own poses and do some beautiful things and for this example what we have here is you can go in select the appropriate joints the joints that are responsible for this and you can create a pose and once you create these poses you can give it a name and you can proceed with that now in cases where you have some sort of uh, existing animation living somewhere else you can also choose to re-import these things and do some cool stuff with it in terms of copying files or copying poses from other files this is also something that will be very possible and you can also choose to change and also you know uh, choose how you want your thumbnail to look like so you can control your looks and you can do a lot of things you know in the long run this is definitely going to change how you get to work with assets blend shapes and also poses directly here in blender so some very cool things that you can do with this and of course this is going to get better and for anyone who would like to try this right now you can actually go in download 3.0 the alpha and start getting good with it so some very cool stuff are happening right now and while we look at things that you might want to check out there's a couple of updates new features and improvements that we have for this week which we would go through and talk about animation and rigging does have a couple of updates which you might want to check out so in terms of adding transform for custom bone shapes and there is also improvements to pose sliding tools so things that deals with push pose from rest you know relax pose to rest pose and all that stuff you can actually read more of this there's also some very cool improvement to the geometry nodes which deals with the use of texture sockets in attribute sample texture node and we've already covered that before so in case you want to see that i'll probably put a link or a card in the video so that you can check that out there's also an update to the geometry node that deals with removing some unnecessary updates you might also want to take a look at the brand new add attribute vector rotates node and of course there is the exposed first blessing point attributes for curves so we've already talked about curves we've seen how you can work with curves within the geometry node which i kind of think is pretty pretty nice so just in case you're thinking about that there is now a very tiny update to that which looks pretty cool now for the ui there is an area closed neighbor selection thingy that is available within the ui so just in case you are you know thinking about working with that you can also notice i'm just going to go ahead 
and show you with this so you can see what we have right here and if we move over to the next you can also see you know what we have right here so the idea here is there's an improvement to the area close neighbor selection so it's a bit more precise this time on how you can select things and uh, the new area close operator can let any neighbor you know replace the area and get it closed so we've already talked about this one before we talked about how you can you know manipulate these things and get good results with it and finally there is a color for texture slash material node socket for small tweaks so this is uh more like the updates that we have for this week and moving forward we also have some community updates for those who like free stuff so getting started we will talk about some things that blender defender has already made available before and there is some very cool updates and brand new set of free add-ons that you can get right here so the very first one is the mocap kite and this is for motion capture you know for facial motion capture so just in case you're thinking about getting into facial motion capture you might want to get this free add-on that he has you know i think he made this available this week i guess so so you can come through and check this one out there is also the node based cinema countdown this is also free it's a note based cinema countdown you can get it there's just a couple of free stuff that he has right here you might want to come through and check it out all of these things are pretty cool so just in case you're thinking about where to get free add-on free you know free notes that you can work with these are nice someone else who is also doing something that is pretty cool is jim jim the creator of mr mannequin tools which actually allows you to export your files from here over to unreal engine vice versa and of course you would also notice that he did get an epic grant has made another add-on. This is known as the Amateur Deform Controls. So what this actually allows you to do is, in case you're trying to bring a rig from a different app over to Blender, it kind of helps you in terms of compatibility. So basically the add-on just simply maintains compatibility for using assets from different you know, DCC apps while enabling artists to wait, rig, and also animate directly in Blender in any way that they choose. And finally, Just 3D Things does have some lovely lovely stuff so this one was also suggested by the community and uh this is really nice there is this feather shader there is also procedural brick shader there's also the checker shader and uh some very cool shading stuff so if you're into shading or probably you're thinking about getting into it and uh, you're thinking about where you can get some free resources for that you might consider taking a look at this ones and uh, you can go through and grab them. So a huge shout out to everyone that made this one possible. And of course, for those who are thinking about getting a free copy of any of these things, I'm going to put links of these in the description where you can grab them and tell me what you think about this one in the comment section. So this is more like it for this week. We do not have a lot of, you know, uh, new features to touch and play with because the folks at Blender Foundation seems to be wrapping up stuff for the release of Blender 2.93. And of course, by next week, we will be getting some more cool updates and probably be taking a look at some of the cool things that we will be shipping with Blender 2.93 DLTS. So tell me what you think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And I'd like to see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.